Good afternoon, Barbadians. This is an unusual moment in an unusual year for us. And we would have expected to have far more people down here on this day of national significance at Golden Square. But yesterday and the day before, we were consumed with fighting what is our new reality, being able to prepare for what the climate brings for us. And it's not only, as you know, for us that loss occurs when countries are hit, but it is also a case that loss may occur in our preparations. And we have now become accustomed to this time of the year being on constant alert. But that helps to root us and to cause us to remember why we should never forget. And we should never forget that there are those who came before us and who tried their best to be able to build a life through the sacrifice that they gave, through their commitment to excellence, through their ability to offer service at all levels of this society. And this government has determined that Barbadians henceforth should always remember from where we have come. This Golden Square Freedom Project that we are launching today will see for us not just a small corner of Bridgetown celebrated the work of Clement Payne, the right excellent Clement Payne and those like Israel Level who went before him to call into for sharp focus the injustices being faced by our people. But we will now in the whole of our town abutting and bounding the Independence Square across the Constitution River from the National Heroes Square we, the people of Barbados, in the third decade of the 21st century, choose to lay claim to this spot to celebrate those that went before us. And why? 50 years from now, 75 years from now, Barbadians must always know that their story had a whole line of progress and they must be able to know every aspect of that story. Golden Square represents, in our view, the lane of the modern framework for democracy and for Barbadians to claim their independent destiny. For it was here that people came and said enough was enough. It was here that people gave expression to the view that they wanted to be in charge of their own destiny, that there was a capacity to educate, to agitate, but not to violate that there was a need for us to be able to dream of a day when Barbadian children could have access to education and to be the best that they could be without necessarily being constrained by their circumstances of birth. It was here from which riots in the land took place. And I have come today to say to you that it is our determination that as we continue to build out this country, as we continue to raise a proud people, that we come to recognize that people must know the details of their story. On this large tower that stands right to the side to the left of me, we shall have digital screens that will continue to tell the story of what made this moment and how Barbados has been forged by Barbadians when they were given the opportunity to claim their own destiny. It is from this square as well that we shall have a monument that captures the names of all persons who lived in this land and then a separate monument to pay tribute to those whose last names we shall never know because they have gone to a place that we don't know but we know the contribution that they have made in the building of this fair land. It is from this location as well, we shall always remember that the example of excellence that has been given to us by those who were not satisfied to just be a person who also ran, but that we instill in our people the commitment to reach to global standards. I need not remind us of the example of the great Cigarfield Sobers, our right excellent Cigarfield Sobers, our national hero. I need not remind us that on the, as he grew up on one side of Bridgetown, to show the world that he could be the greatest cricketer that ever lived. On the other side of Bridgetown, Rihanna was born and also grew up to show that she too could grasp opportunity and become the greatest of her generation with respect to building the kind of empire to change lives and to bring the all-inclusive spirit that is so dear to the Barbadian um, DNA that we believe that everyone should be given a chance, that we believe in fairness and inclusion. And to that extent, this is the journey that we shall make. And I ask us today to reflect also on the fact that we have chosen deliberately 
to lay a framework about how do we repair the historic injustices? How do we have reparatory justice? This government has chosen, as you know, to be able to deal with the spaces that our vendors are forced to occupy. This government has recognized that we have a responsibility to ensure that people are allowed to ply their trade in a condition and an environment that befits the dignity of them as individual Barbadian citizens. I look forward to the completion, therefore, of the vendor's market across the road at Fairchild Street. I equally look forward, at the same time, to the completion of the work at Temple Yard. And I recognize that I'm with Barvin at um, Spring Garden that we have been able to lay the preliminary framework for the vendors markets there which we expect to continue to grow and believe you me there were others who wanted those spaces but we as a country have chosen to recognize enfranchisement and in particular economic enfranchisement of our people and to that extent therefore all of this becomes interconnected and part of the single story of how we shall move this country forward and how we shall allow Barbadians to become world-class global citizens but forever anchored by Barbadian roots and Barbadian values. So my friends, as we gather here today to remember the great work of not just the right excellent Clement Payne or Israel Lovell or all those who accompanied them on that day or all those who lost their lives or all those who ultimately were convicted before being pardoned in the, in, in the efforts of being able to bring justice to the people of this country on that occasion. As we reflect on all of that, let us be clear that history is intended to be a platform to propel us to a greater and higher calling still and not to repeat the mistakes of the past. Let us be clear as well that this city of Bridgetown shall be a place where others can come and learn and this location can be a place from which we can come and speak to our people and to be able to make great um, opportunities for statements, for consultation, because the era of Golden Square is not to be left in the 1930s, but it is to be used forever as a platform to carry this country to a higher calling always, but to do so within the context of consultation, to do so within the context of conversation, to do so within the context of treating to this at the center of our capital. It is ironic that as we stand here, we see all of the major institutions of our country and across the water behind the National Hero Square, we also see the Parliament. Minister John King has already announced to the country that the Cabinet has taken a decision to remove the statue of Lord Nelson and that the consultation that is taking place now is only as to the location as to where it shall go. But that we are satisfied that there ought to be a more appropriate place and certainly not the center of the National Hero Square. For Barbadians whose memory is long, you would know that this was a position for which I um, received a great deal of opposition at the time in the late 1990s, early 2000s, because of the position that I expressed with respect to that statue. But what does that show us? That with time at our side, we begin to see that great ideas always find a home and always find expression to become life. And to that extent, we are conscious that the Black Lives Movement has allowed us to be able to capture the attention of the global community and to be able to tell the story that we've been telling for decades and centuries, but that for which there was little audience or little appetite. But the reality is that as we celebrate the 75th anniversary also of the United Nations, it is impossible for us to go forward without understanding that the platform for development which most of our small island developing states call for is as a result of the extraction of wealth for centuries that did not lay a platform for opportunity and development for our people. It is to this cause that we commit ourselves and it is to this cause that we recognize that this is not going to be achieved in five years or 10 years or 20 years, but that this is a continuous effort just as it has taken us decades to be able to remove the legal vestiges of colonialism and slavery. 
it will also take us decades to be able to ensure that we create the platform for economic enfranchisement and to allow our people to be the best that they can be using here, using Barbados as a base to claim the global opportunities that we know are there for us. And to that extent, it is for us also to have the full and frank conversations about the good and the bad. Not every decision in life is easy. Not every action that we take in life gives us the kinds of positive consequences that we want. But that is life. And as we would say, it is what it is. But to that extent, we have an obligation to give service, to recognize that sometimes we must sacrifice, whether it is sacrifice in terms of making our body whole, whether it is sacrifice in terms of making our society or our community whole, whether it is sacrifice in terms of making the global environment in which we live whole. And to that extent, these are the values that are important. In addition, I ask us to also, as I said, to remember that selflessness is a key component. And to also remember that the commitment to excellence, to world-class actions, to world-class service, to the production of world-class quality goods when we have to produce goods, that that should be the hallmark. Excellence as our hallmark creates a platform for the greatest level of opportunities for every Barbadian. So my friends across Barbados today, I ask us to reflect on this day of national significance. And as I seek to lay the wreath on behalf of the people and government of Barbados, to give thanks for those who lost their lives, for those who lost their freedom, for those who simply were supportive but did not necessarily lose their lives or freedom, we say to all of you, thank you because you are the ones who laid the platform for the modern nation that we are now proud to lead. You're the one who laid the platform for those of us who can now vote and to be able to claim our destiny in a way that allows, that is allowed in any and every democracy. And my friends, I say to us, over the course of the next few months, when we finish the wonderful work that will be done at Golden Square Freedom Park, long may this be a space of peace, of reflection, of education, of agitation, but also of nation building. This is our Barbados, this is who we are, and this is how we shall do it. Because our people, our children, our grandchildren shall forever know the story of the making of this nation. I thank you and may God bless our nation and God bless each and every one of you. Thank you.